It's judgment day for Robbins Peronis. I'm looking forward to this coming to a conclusion. She and her attorney, Todd Allen, meet early at her home before her code enforcement hearing at Cape City Hall. The next case is based on the agenda. A code compliance officer begins by listing the multitude of codes the city claims Baronis is violating. 19-2.5.1, use of public sewers required. The city raising three main issues, Baronis' use of rainwater as a water supply, her use of solar power for electricity, and whether the home is connected to a sewer system. After nearly two hours of arguments, evidence, witnesses, and clarifications. But they're saying you're not hooked up because you're not signed up. Frustration. And right now we're throwing everything up against the wall, running people all over City Hall to grab stuff to piece together an argument. The magistrate has heard enough. Uh, let me tell you where I'm, what I'm prepared to rule on. Guilty of violating codes that require Sparonis to hook up to an approved water supply system. You have to have uh, a water supply system that meets the International Plumbing Code that's connected to the water plumbing systems in the house. And I don't find, notwithstanding the use of rainwater, that that's an adequate and approved supply system. Not guilty of not having a proper electrical system. There may be violations of the code, but I don't think they've been properly alleged here. As for the sewer connection. I'm going to find not guilty because it appears that there is connection to the public sewer system. Speronis is two for three and happy with the outcome. I think we were there for close to two hours, so he really reviewed the evidence, and that's all you can ask for. I'm impressed with the way the magistrate uh, delved into the issues. I'm disappointed in, in, at the stops the city pulled to try to get some sort of conviction today. Liza Fernandez, Fox 4, in your corner. It's a vindictive action. The city of Cape Coral cutting Robbins Peronis access to the sewer system after a code enforcement hearing last week. It's not an issue for me. I have other sanitary means. So we asked her to show us how she's disposing of her waste. It is a five gallon bucket, a plastic bag inside, and then there's a toilet seat. Speronis is using what amounts to a camping toilet. Tie the bag up just like you would your animals and you throw it in the trash. And in case of spills, we have a little detergent in it, put the rainwater in, wash it out, spray it with some colloidal silver to kill all the bacteria and all the viruses. Even as Peronis does her business in a five gallon bucket, the city continues to charge her monthly water and sewer fees. So I'm being charged $70 a month the back fees backing up to more than $4,000. She says she's not paying on principle. If your water is turned off and you just want to pay the bill, that's not allowed. You have to pay the bill and turn the water on. If she were to pay, she would automatically be reconnected. The city's customer billing manager tells me it's not fair. Every other customer has to pay and Robin is not. Liza Fernandez, Fox 4, in your corner. This is my biggest embarrassment. The kittens kind of took over my couch and love seat. Urine and feces litter this Cape Coral home. Even the refrigerator is covered with waste. I think it had a lot to do when, when we lost our son. Not that anything could take his place, but we just kept finding different things to love. With 17 cats and kittens, four dogs, two rabbits, and a snake, it quickly got out of control. But now, this family is headed in a new direction after crews in hazmat suits sift through the filth and remove their pets. We, just, we decided to step in and do what's best for the animals and, and also work with the individual, hopefully having a better outcome than what she's doing now. Lee County Domestic Animal Services went to the home after getting a complaint. Deplorable conditions to all the rooms. I guess when you live in it for so long, you you just get used to it. The homeowner says she'd been trying for months to find homes for the animals and sees this day as bittersweet. I know that this was best for everybody, for the animals and for us, and just knowing that they'll be going to good homes and we'll be able to get our home fixed up. It, that's a relief to me. Filth led to a life full of isolation, but now this hoarder is embracing the chance for a normal life once again. 
I don't think I'll ever let it get the way it was before. Never. <laughs> This is the lot we're talking about, sandwiched inside a very nice neighborhood in the Southwest Cape. And although things are quiet now, neighbors we talk to tell us when this place turns into an all out party, they don't even want to be in their own backyard. It's a really wonderful neighborhood to live in. It is quiet. We enjoy the dolphins. We enjoy the manatees that come through here. And who could blame anyone for wanting to hang out here? We came home uh, about a week ago from being out on the boat and it looked like a park. There were about 20 people, six cars. Allie Ventilla snapped these pictures of unwanted guests, fishing, coolers, chairs, making quite the day of it. Sometimes on a Monday, sometimes Wednesdays and Fridays are pretty popular, definitely on the weekends. The whole thing just uncomfortable, says Allie, so much so she doesn't want to appear on camera. You, you can't even like come out in a bathing suit? No, I won't. There are some gentlemen that stare and don't stop staring until I go back into the house. Neighbors have called police, but technically the day trippers aren't doing anything wrong. KPD says it's not against the law to fish off a lot without a no trespassing sign posted. A trespass authorization form must be on file or the owner must be present and asking people to leave. Thank you very much. So the property owner, an attorney on the East Coast, his secretary telling me that uh, the office had not received any calls or any notices about problems with these lots and um, they weren't aware of any problems with the lots. The secretary agrees to receive pictures and the trespass authorization for the owner so police can enforce trespassing laws and neighbors can get back to enjoying their backyards. And it's so nice to, to be outside today and nothing be across there. <laughs> Liza Fernandez, Fox 4, in your corner. A cell phone camera captures James Griffin punching fellow student Jonathan Cologne twice in the head. The ruckus going down during lunch last Thursday at East Lee County High School. Jonathan says because he's gay. After I got hit, I was stunned at first. The video then shows in police report state Mark Betterson jumping in between the two. And then Mark came out of nowhere and then they got into a fight. Jonathan was just going to stand there and just get beat up. And if I didn't jump into it, it would have got serious. Jonathan says when he got out of the hospital that day and learned both students had been suspended, he reached out to Mark Betterson. I texted him and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you got involved in this, but, but thank you for doing what you did. And I'm going to try to do everything I can, like, you know, to get you know, people to be lenient towards you. The next day, Jonathan organized a protest. After breakfast, he says many seniors sat silently, refusing to go to class. Their message seeming to get through to Principal Brian Mangan. He expressed that he was touched by our unity and our, and our maturity in handling the situation, and he was impressed that we, we weren't in here rioting. After a two-day suspension, administrators allowing Mark Betterson back to class Tuesday. We've turned it around and, and it, it's had a good result on us. It's had a good effect too. I noticed that um, people are also more comfortable with being themselves and, and that bullying is probably at an all-time low right now. Liza Fernandez, Fox 4, in your corner. I don't know what to say. I'm just so heartbroken over it. A difficult sight to take in for members of a quiet Fort Myers community. A pair of sneakers and a baseball cap are all that remain from an elderly couple's morning walk. Cones and police tape surround the deadly scene. They must have gone out together to walk and I just can't believe it. The Florida Highway Patrol says a driver struck and killed two pedestrians as they attempted to cross Winkler Avenue early this morning. FHP tells Fox 4 the driver simply didn't see them coming. <laughs> At times, the scene turned emotional as crowds of onlookers gathered just behind the police tape, watching the troopers conduct their investigation. This couple knew the two who were hit. They tell us they live just three doors down. They also mentioned that the couple were snowbirds from the Northeast and had just returned to the neighborhood just two short weeks ago. The elderly couple was known to go on their daily walks and were well known in the community. He ran the bingo here at Bermuda Club and we used to come up there. They lived at the Bermuda Club for the better part of the last decade. The community mere feet from where they were struck and killed. Can't believe it. Julian Glover, Fox 4 in your corner. This leeway transmitter soon could be a thing of the past. While it might make getting around just a little bit easier, it could mean a whole lot to your bottom line. 
Last month, the Lee County Board of Commissioners received a memo from the Florida Department of Transportation asking the board to further consider joining the new centralized customer service system for toll payment. The plan would effectively merge Leeway as well as other toll agencies around the state with some pass. On Tuesday, Leeway officials asked commissioners for more time deciding whether or not to join the program. Commissioners agreed. Well, we have to have a study of, of the driving tendencies of, of the motorists in Lee County, number one, what their economic situation would be. That economic impact study will weigh a few potential plans to merge Leeway with SunPass and how each could affect you. Keeping the discount programs, eliminating them all together, and doing some sort of hybrid. Leeway offers significant discount programs for those that frequently use one of the three major bridges in southwest Florida. SunPass currently does not offer any similar plan. While any plan other than keeping the current discounts in place would affect all drivers, one group is most at risk. As far as who would be impacted the hardest, I would think it would be unlimited customers. Unlimited customers like those traveling back and forth on Sanibel could get hit the hardest without the inclusion of a discount program. Mark Lair is worried about the potential impact. And if SunPass doesn't honor that same ag agreement that Lee County has, more or less like a tripling or quadrupling of our cost of living out on the island. Leeway managers tell me they are looking at every angle and working to ensure that the consumer's best interest is protected. We need to be conscious and sensitive to their needs before we make steps to join the common back office. Leeway's economic impact study could be completed by this time next year, but the switch, if it does happen, won't take place until sometime mid-2015. In Fort Myers tonight, Julian Glover, Fox 4 in your corner. A standoff in St. James City ending peacefully and with one man in custody this morning. 51-year-old Dwayne Wyatt is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, false imprisonment, and battery. A male victim alleging that Wyatt would not let him leave Wyatt's home on York Road unless he agreed to perform a sex act on him. The victim escaping and asking a neighbor to call 911, saying Wyatt took his keys and pointed a gun at him. Lee County Sheriff's deputies say Wyatt refused to discuss the matter with them and locked himself inside the home. Uh, wake up in the morning and see all kinds of, you know, <clears throat> you know Lee County uh, Sheriff's, you know, SWAT and I guess whoever else, you know, like, like, wow. <laughs> like 30 cops and looked like the SWAT team was coming out to Pine Island, so, you know, he called us to see what was happening. Wyatt surrendered to deputies just after 9 this morning, and the victim was not seriously hurt. A six, a treat for your appetite as the first ever Zaxby's in Southwest Florida is open for business. <laughs> Hundreds of hungry customers and excited customers rushing in for this morning's grand opening, which included giveaways and several other activities. The first 100 customers in line received a Zaxby's Fanatic Pack, including free Zaxby's for a year. What? This is just one of several businesses to pop up along South Cleveland Avenue in Fort Myers in recent months. Fox 4 caught up with the owners and the crazy person who was the first one in line. You're first in line, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. How's it feel? Like I'm going to get some free chicken and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> we have a line wrapped around the building of over 200 people. Super excited to be in the community. Super excited to have such an overwhelming response. Well, the owners tell us Zaxby's is expected to bring 225 jobs to Fort Myers over the next five years. Scary moments for parents in North Fort Myers this morning after more than 30 kids were shaken up during a school bus crash. Happened shortly after 8 o'clock right at the intersection of Hart Drive and Zoysia Lane. Florida Highway Patrol says the bus headed to J. Colon English Elementary School when a van blew right past a stop sign here, drove right into the bus's path. Both of these vehicles sustaining major damage, but the drivers of both vehicles having only minor injuries. And thankfully, none of the kids was hurt in this, but a little bit frightened. The kids just started crying and yelling and screaming. Was it scary? Yeah. Because this way it's not, there's no stop signs, it's just this way. Mm -hmm. So they'll just fly on down through and the kids are crossing to go to the buses. It's like they just need to slow down and pay attention. Another bus eventually brought the kids to school. Meanwhile, the driver of that van, 35-year-old Floyd Rose, was ticketed for causing that crash.